Dimensions Collide, Part 1, The Awakening, Chapter 11, Confronting Palpatine. A shroud of despair hung heavy over the Nexus. The once vibrant chamber echoed with a chilling silence, a stark contrast to the swirling celestial energy that usually pulsed within. The avatars, their human forms still unfamiliar and their minds clouded with fragmented memories of their celestial counterparts, stood at the center, a testament to the desperate sacrifice made. News had arrived, a horrifying whisper carried on the astral winds. The devourer, that cosmic entity of insatiable hunger, had breached their defenses and slipped into a fractured dimension. A twisted mirror image of a fallen empire ruled by a dark power. Worse, it had taken a fragment of Gaia's essence with it, fueling its insatiable hunger and twisting the very fabric of reality. Dr. Vasquez, a human scientist whose life's work intertwined science and the mysteries of the multiverse, addressed the assembled guardians. His voice, usually radiating a quiet confidence, now trembled with worry. The situation is dire. The Devourer now roams this fractured dimension, a realm eerily similar to a dark chapter in our own past. Even divine energy falters in its oppressive grip. Without Gaia's essence complete, the delicate balance of the multiverse hangs precariously on the brink. Artemis, goddess of the hunt, her celestial bow taut with unspoken tension, let out a sigh that echoed through the chamber. We cannot allow the Devourer to consume that fragment. The power it holds, a fragment of creation itself, will fuel its hunger to unimaginable levels. Neo, a warrior from a future ravaged by a similar entity, his face etched with the battle scars of time, spoke with a quiet determination. Then we must pursue it into the very heart of this corrupted dimension, no matter the cost. Trinity, Neo's unwavering partner, stepped forward, her gaze resolute. But how? This dimension, its very fabric rejects our divine essence. To enter is to risk annihilation. A long, tense silence descended upon the Council. The weight of their impossible task settled upon them like a shroud. Just as despair threatened to consume them, a new voice, a whisper of pure knowledge that echoed with the wisdom of creation itself, filled the chamber. It was Dr. Vasquez. There may be a way, he spoke, his voice trembling with the weight of the proposition. An ancient ritual, a dangerous one, that allows a fragment of your divine essence to be invested in a human vessel. This vessel, an avatar in the truest sense, would possess enough power to navigate this fractured dimension and retrieve Gaia's essence. The Guardians exchanged glances, the enormity of the sacrifice settling upon them like a shroud. To create an avatar was to relinquish a portion of their being, to experience a temporary separation from who they truly were. It was a terrifying prospect akin to severing a limb. There are risks, Dr. Vasquez continued, his voice laced with a note of apology. The avatars will retain only a fraction of your knowledge and power. They will be vulnerable, susceptible to the darkness of this dimension. And upon fulfilling their mission, the connection between them and your true selves will be severed. Yet despite the danger, a flicker of hope ignited in the Council's eyes. It was a desperate gamble, but it was their only hope. One by one, they stepped forward, their resolve unwavering. Each guardian, Apollo the Radiant, Artemis the Huntress, Neo the Scarred Warrior, and Trinity the Unwavering Companion, offered a portion of their essence to fuel the creation ritual. The Nexus pulsed with renewed energy, a blinding light bathing the chamber as the avatars manifested. Four human figures, each a perfect reflection of their divine counterparts emerged, their eyes filled with confusion and a flicker of a forgotten power. Alex, a woman with fiery red hair and eyes that mirrored the warmth of Apollo, stood at the forefront. Beside her stood Dr. Evelyn Walsh, a brilliant astrophysicist recruited by Dr. Vasquez to navigate the complexities of this twisted dimension. Across from them stood James Hawk Hawkins, a hardened soldier with Neo's steely gaze and Trinity's unwavering determination. His companion was Sarah Sparrow Jones, a skilled hacker drawn into the celestial conflict due to her unique ability to understand and manipulate technology across realities. Dr. Vasquez stepped forward, his face creased with worry and gratitude. You are our last hope, he said, his voice thick with emotion. The devourer in this dimension has taken the form of a being known as Palpatine. You must confront him in his own domain, retrieve Gaia's essence, and find your way back. There will be no direct communication with us. We can only offer guidance through synchronicities, meaningful coincidences that will guide your path. Each avatar received a pendant, pulsating with a faint emerald light, a physical manifestation of their connection to Gaia's essence. With a heavy heart, Dr. Vasquez activated a swirling dimensional rift, the air crackling with raw energy. Fear and determination warred within the avatars as they stepped forward, ready to face a twisted reflection of galactic history. 
The rift spat them out onto a desolate metallic platform, a colossal, menacing space station dominating the sky above. The air hung heavy with the stench of stale machinery and something more sinister, an oppressive darkness that gnawed at the edges of their minds. Alex, channeling Apollo's radiant energy, felt a flicker of warmth struggle to penetrate the oppressive chill. This place, it's like a tomb, she whispered, her voice echoing in the vast emptiness. Hawk, fueled by Neo's tactical experience, surveyed the scene. Below them, sprawling cityscapes stretched across the horizon, bathed in an unnatural crimson glow. This isn't just any space station, he said, his voice grim. This is a symbol of power twisted to serve darkness. Sparrow, her fingers already dancing across the keyboard of a device provided by Dr. Vasquez, interfaced with the station's network. Security protocols are unlike anything I've seen, she muttered, frustration lacing her voice. Everything is encrypted, layered with dark side energy. Dr. Walsh, drawing upon her scientific expertise, examined the pendant, its emerald glow pulsing ever so slightly. The essence here, she said, it's distorted, corrupted by the devourer's influence. But faintly, I can sense a connection, a pull towards a specific location within the station. Following Dr. Walsh's guidance, they navigated the labyrinthine corridors of the station, dodging stormtroopers who patrolled with an almost robotic efficiency. The air buzzed with the whispers of propaganda, praising a figure known as Emperor Palpatine, a name that sent chills down their spines. Suddenly, the sound of crackling energy and clashing blades echoed from around a corner. They cautiously approached to see a lone figure, cloaked in a dark robe, effortlessly deflecting blaster fire from a squad of stormtroopers. His wrinkled face, etched with undeniable power, held a chilling familiarity. Palpatine, Alex hissed, a wave of disgust washing over her. He looked different, aged, yet the icy glint in his eyes, the aura of malevolent power that radiated from him was unmistakable. The battle was a whirlwind of dark side energy and acrobatic lightsaber strikes. Their celestial essence granted them heightened agility and strength, but Palpatine's power, fueled by the Devourer's stolen fragment, was formidable. Just as Palpatine raised his hand to unleash a wave of dark side energy, a blinding flash of light filled the corridor. A holographic image, a fleeting glimpse of shimmering blue and white, materialized behind Palpatine. It was a rebel pilot, Luke Skywalker, a hero from a forgotten timeline, a flicker of hope within the oppressive darkness. Seizing the opportunity, Hawk launched himself at Palpatine, disrupting his focus. Alex unleashed a surge of radiant energy, blinding the Sith Lord for a precious moment. In the confusion, Sparrow managed to tap into the station's security systems, briefly disabling the force field surrounding a massive vault at the end of the corridor. With a shared glance, the avatars realized this must be where the corrupted essence was housed. They charged forward, past a momentarily stunned Palpatine, towards the vault, a desperate gamble for a chance to sever the Devourer's hold on this dimension. The massive vault door hissed open, revealing a chamber bathed in an unnatural purple light. In the center, suspended within a containment field, pulsated a fragment of Gaia's essence, radiating a distorted emerald glow. The corruption was evident, tendrils of darkness snaking around the pure energy, threatening to consume it whole. There! Dr. Walsh exclaimed, the emerald light of her pendant resonating with the essence within. We need to get it out of there, disrupt the containment field. Sparrow, her fingers a blur across the keyboard, hacked into the vault's controls. Alarms blared, red lights strobing as the containment field crackled with destabilizing energy. Palpatine, his rage evident in the dark force aura that swirled around him, stormed into the chamber. Foolish creatures, he boomed, his voice echoing with power. You dare interfere with the inevitable? A fierce battle erupted. Hawk, drawing on Neo's fighting prowess, engaged Palpatine in a desperate duel. He deflected the Sith Lord's lightsaber blows with practiced movements, but the dark side energy radiating from Palpatine threatened to overpower him. Meanwhile, Alex, channeling Apollo's radiant energy, focused on the fragment. She closed her eyes, picturing the nexus, the swirling energy of creation. A surge of golden light erupted from her outstretched palms, pushing against the darkness that enveloped the essence. It's not working, Dr. Walsh shouted, worry etched on her face. The corruption is too strong. A surge of frustration welled up within Alex. They were so close, yet the devourer's influence held firm. Suddenly a vision flashed across her mind, a woman with flowing white hair, holding a lightsaber blade radiating with pure light. The image, a fleeting glimpse of Leia Organa, another hero from the forgotten timeline, flickered and vanished. But it was enough. With renewed determination, Alex tapped into the divine essence within her, channeling all her strength into the golden light. 
The containment field flickered and sputtered, finally giving way as the emerald light of Gaia's essence pulsed freely. Sparrow, seizing the opportunity, activated a device provided by Dr. Vasquez. A swirling vortex of energy materialized beside her, a temporary rift back to the Nexus. We have it, Alex yelled, holding the fragment of essence aloft, its emerald glow illuminating her face. But before they could escape, Palpatine, enraged by their success, unleashed a powerful wave of dark side energy. Hawk, pushing himself beyond his limits, deflected the brunt of the attack. The energy slammed into him, sending him flying across the chamber. He lay crumpled against the wall, his body racked with pain. Hawk! Alex screamed, torn between retrieving him and escaping with the essence. A sense of calm washed over her, a message from the Guardians relayed through a synchronicity. A faint blue light flickered on the wall, revealing a hidden passage. It was their only chance. With a heavy heart, Alex handed the vial containing the fragment to Dr. Walsh. Get him out of here, she commanded, nodding towards the passage. Sparrow hesitated, her eyes filled with concern, but seeing the determination in Alex's gaze, she grabbed Dr. Walsh and Hawk, dragging them towards the hidden passage. As they disappeared into the shadows, Alex turned back to face Palpatine. Go, she said, her voice ringing with defiance. Tell your master I'll be waiting. Palpatine let out a chilling laugh. You are a fool, child. You cannot hope to defeat the Devourer. Alex took a deep breath, channeling all the remaining celestial essence within her. We'll see about that, she said, her eyes blazing with a radiant golden light. As the battle between the lone Avatar and the corrupted Sith Lord raged, Dr. Walsh and Sparrow navigated the hidden passage, a desperate race against time to escape the collapsing dimension and deliver the fragment of Gaia's essence back to the Nexus. The hidden passage was a maze of cramped corridors and rickety maintenance tunnels. The stench of stale air and old machinery hung heavy, a stark contrast to the sterile metallic environment outside. Dr. Walsh, her arm wrapped protectively around the unconscious hawk, pushed onward. Sparrow, nimble and quick, scouted ahead, her fingers constantly tapping on the holographic map projected on her wrist device. Not much further, Sparrow grunted, squeezing through a particularly narrow passage. The exit point should be just beyond this intersection. Relief washed over Dr. Walsh, momentarily easing the worry gnawing at her stomach. Leaving Alex behind to face Palpatine was a gut-wrenching decision, but they couldn't all stay and fight. Their mission, now more crucial than ever, depended on retrieving the essence and escaping this twisted dimension before it was too late. Suddenly a sickening tremor shook the passage. Dust rained down and broken pipes sprayed steam and coolant. Dr. Walsh stumbled, nearly dropping Hawk. What was that? She cried, fear lacing her voice. The station, it's collapsing, Sparrow answered, her voice strained. The fight with Palpatine must be reaching its climax. They pressed forward, the tremors intensifying with each passing moment. The air grew thick with smoke and the acrid scent of burning metal. Dr. Walsh coughed, tears welling up in her eyes. We have to hurry, she rasped, urging herself forward. Her legs felt like lead and exhaustion threatened to overwhelm her. Just as she thought she couldn't take another step, the passage opened into a vast, hangar-like chamber. Sunlight, a welcome sight after the oppressive darkness of the station, streamed in through a gaping hole in the ceiling. A battered escape pod, half buried in debris, sat in the center of the chamber. There, Sparrow exclaimed, pointing, our way out. Reaching the escape pod proved to be another challenge. The chamber floor was slick with spilled coolant, making each step a treacherous one. Finally, they reached the escape pod and wrestled the heavy hatch open. Sparrow expertly reconnected the damaged power cables, then turned to Dr. Walsh. I can set the coordinates for the Nexus, but there's no guarantee this thing will even hold together long enough to get us there. Dr. Walsh, her voice trembling with a newfound resolve, nodded. We don't have a choice. Get us out of here, Sparrow, now! Sparrow punched in the coordinates, her brow furrowed in concentration. With a hiss and a sputter, the pod's engines coughed to life, sending a wave of relief washing over Dr. Walsh. Just as the pod lurched forward, a colossal explosion rocked the chamber. Sparks rained down, and a massive chunk of debris hurtled towards them. Sparrow, with reflexes honed from years of navigating virtual battlefields, steered the pod just in time, the debris narrowly missing them. The escape pod shot out of the collapsing station, a fiery inferno erupting behind them. The sight of the once dominant space station disintegrating in the vacuum of space filled Dr. Walsh with a mix of awe and terror. A tense silence filled the pod as they hurtled towards the swirling energy of the Nexus. Thoughts of Alex, alone and facing the corrupted Palpatine, gnawed at Dr. Walsh's mind. Had their sacrifice been in vain? 
As they neared the nexus, an energy surge knocked Dr. Walsh unconscious. When she awoke, she found herself nestled in a familiar rejuvenation chamber, the steady hum of the nexus technology a soothing balm to her battered body. Beside her stood a grim-faced Dr. Vasquez. Relief flooded her as she realized she wasn't alone. Hawk? She rasped, her voice hoarse. He's recovering, Dr. Vasquez replied, but he took a severe beating. You both did. Dr. Walsh's heart pounded with a mixture of relief and dread. Alex? Dr. Vasquez's silence spoke volumes. We haven't been able to establish a connection with her since you left the station. A crushing weight settled in Dr. Walsh's chest. Had Alex been lost along with Palpatine in the destruction of the space station, or was she still out there, trapped in that nightmarish dimension? The fate of their world, the fate of the multiverse, hung in the balance, and Dr. Walsh knew their fight was far from over. Dr. Walsh spent the next few days in a state of restless recovery. The harrowing escape from the collapsing space station and the uncertainty surrounding Alex's fate gnawed at her. Hawk, though physically recovering, remained withdrawn, haunted by the image of Alex facing Palpatine alone. One morning, Dr. Vasquez entered their shared recovery chamber, his face etched with a mixture of hope and trepidation. There's been a development, he announced, his voice low. Dr. Walsh and Hawk sat upright, anticipation flickering in their eyes. What is it? Dr. Walsh asked, her voice raspy. We've detected a faint residual energy signature, Dr. Vasquez explained. It's weak, but it matches the celestial essence you retrieved and Alex's own signature. A spark of hope ignited within Dr. Walsh. So she's alive? It's not a definitive confirmation, Dr. Vasquez cautioned. The signature is faint and erratic, bouncing around different points within the multiverse. It's possible she's trapped in some sort of dimensional anomaly. Hawk slammed his fist on the armrest of his medical pod. We can't just sit here while she's out there. I understand your frustration, Dr. Vasquez said, his voice calm. But a direct rescue attempt is highly risky. We don't know where this anomaly is or what dangers it might hold. Dr. Walsh, her mind racing, interjected. There has to be a way. What if we can use the residual essence signature as a beacon? Maybe we can amplify it, create a sort of celestial homing signal to guide her back to the Nexus? Dr. Vasquez stroked his chin, considering her proposal. An intriguing notion, he conceded. But such a feat would require a delicate manipulation of celestial energy. It's a risky proposition, but... He trailed off a glint of determination in his eyes. Days turned into weeks as Dr. Walsh, Hawk, and Dr. Vasquez, along with a team of Nexus engineers, toiled away in the technological heart of the celestial chamber. Frustration mounted as attempts to amplify the essence signature met with limited success. The signal remained faint, a flickering candle flame in a vast cosmic ocean. Just as hope began to dwindle, a breakthrough arrived, not through scientific brilliance, but through a touch of synchronicity. One evening, as Dr. Walsh and Hawk sat in the chamber's observation deck, a holographic display flickered to life, revealing a historical record, a forgotten legend from a parallel timeline. It depicted a group of warriors wielding celestial energy alongside a weapon known as the Star Forge, a device capable of amplifying energy signatures on a cosmic scale. The legend spoke of their successful rescue of a lost comrade stranded in a dimensional anomaly. Excitement crackled through the observation deck, this was the missing piece, the key to amplifying the essence signature and guiding Alex back home. With renewed vigor, they delved into the ancient texts, piecing together the complex design of the Star Forge. Weeks of frantic construction followed. Finally, a towering structure of celestial metal and swirling energy stood before them, a testament to their combined ingenuity and desperation. The Star Forge pulsed with an otherworldly light waiting to be unleashed. The moment of truth arrived, they channeled their combined celestial essence into the Star Forge, focusing it on the faint flickering signal of Alex's essence. The chamber pulsed with blinding light as the Star Forge roared to life, sending a powerful beacon of celestial energy surging through the multiverse. A tense silence followed, then a faint flicker, a surge in the essence signature. It was faint, but undeniable. Alex was responding, drawing closer to the Nexus. Relief washed over them, tears welling up in Dr. Walsh's eyes. Their mission was far from over. The Devourer still loomed, a threat to all realities. But for now, they had won a crucial battle. As the faint echo of Alex's essence grew stronger, a renewed sense of hope filled the chamber. They had brought her back from the brink. They would face whatever dangers awaited them together. Join us on our journey to save the multiverse. Support our project and gain access to exclusive content, behind-the-scenes updates, and more. Your contribution helps us continue creating epic stories like Dimensions Collide.